it is a night like no other. Jesus told his disciples that one of them, his, one of his closest friends, is going to betray him. He has then celebrated the Passover, but he made it about himself. He said that the bread was his body, which is about to be broken. That the cup of wine is his blood, which is to be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. They then went out to the Mount of Olives and Jesus told them that they were all going to fall away that night. And even though they defended it, even though Peter defended it, Jesus told Peter that he would deny him three times. And now we're in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus takes three of his closest friends and was sorrowful. He was troubled. Although these words are probably a little bit too polite, a little bit too nice what Jesus was experiencing here. He is in deep, troubling, terrible distress. He was in anguish. He was filled with grief. He even tells his friends that he was overwhelmed with agony to the point of death. Yes, this is the same Jesus who came into this world as a baby. This is the same Jesus who wowed the crowds with his teaching, with authority. This is the same Jesus who healed the sick, who opened the eyes of the blind, who calmed the seas, who cast out the demons, who even raised the dead. He's here in complete agony. But what is causing him to grieve? Why is he like this? Well, a cup. A cup which is the cross. He knew he had to drink it. He knew he had to experience it. He even told his disciples earlier that he was going to. And his moment had come. But this cup isn't an ordinary cup, but a cup of judgment. Uh, In the prophets of the Old Testament, in the book of Revelation, when the nations have said to a drunk from the cup, it was never a good result for them. God's wrath was being poured out on them. And when they experience the cup and when they drink from the cup, they experience the full-on judgment of God. And let me tell you, you don't want to experience the judgment of God. You can't be under his judgment and live. You don't want to go near that cup. And on this night, Jesus collapses to the ground, with his face to the ground, in agony, sweat, and tears, and cries out, My Father! If it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yes, even Jesus, God's very own son, wants this cup to be taken away. If there's any other way, Lord, if there's any other option, let it be. But his prayer doesn't stop there. He prays, yet not as I will, but as you will. Not my preference, but your preference. Not what I want, but what you want. My Father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. But what's the point? What will this actually do? Well, anyone who has lived against God's will is deserving of his judgment. And that means everyone who has ever lived 
for all have fallen short, for all sin, and have fallen short of the glory of God. So what we rightly deserve is punishment. We should be the ones drinking the cup of God's wrath. It should be us who is punished by God. But there is someone who has lived the completely sinless and blameless life. He didn't do anything to deserve punishment. He didn't do anything against God's will. And that's Jesus, the Son of God. Very soon, he's going to drink the cup of God's punishment and drink it to the very dregs. He's going to experience the full judgment of the Father. He's about to be delivered into the hands of sinners. He's about to be unjustly trialed. He's about to be mocked, spat on, bloodied, shamed, and put to death on a cruel Roman cross and eventually cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And why does he do this? Well, so that we don't have to. So that the cup is taken away. He drinks the cup of God's wrath so that we don't have to. He is punished in our place. And why? Why does he go through this with this? Well, because of his complete and utter love for us. That's why. Even through tears and agony and grief and sorrow, even when his disciples abandon him, he goes through with this. Because he loves us. And his grace and compassion never ends. His mercy is infinite. His love knows no bounds, not even death. And all that we have to do is to recognize him for who he truly is. The Lord of all. Ask for forgiveness. Live for him. And we can be fully assured that our punishment has been taken by Jesus. We don't have to face the cup of God's wrath because Jesus has taken it away. And this is all part of God's plan. This is all part of God's will. This wasn't plan B. Uh, this wasn't making the best of a bad situation. This was God's plan from the very beginning. And Jesus willingly goes along with it. Not my will, but your will be done. Even to the point of anguish, torment, sorrow, trial, and pain. And death. Meanwhile, while Jesus is praying in agony, the disciples sleep. Possibly not knowing or fully appreciating what was going to happen over these next few days. But Jesus knows precisely what is going to happen. His time has come. Eventually, Judas comes with a crowd large crowd armed to the teeth. He greets Jesus, Rabbi, and kisses him. And then Jesus is arrested. He shows no resistance, no pushback. He submits. Although one of his disciples tries to resist, Jesus tells him not to. He says that he can call on a large, huge, thousands of armies of, of angels to help him, but he won't. And he won't so that scriptures will be fulfilled. So that God's will will be done. 
so that he will go through these next few days because of his great love for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that our punishment has been taken by Jesus. We thank you so much that Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. We thank you so much for this night and the days ahead. Help us to renew our trust and our hope in Jesus. Help us live for him all the days of our lives. Amen.